Greetings and welcome to the fourth episode of the Math Olympiad Lecture Series. Today's lesson is on the topic of square numbers. The objective of this lesson will be for students to be able to square two-digit numbers mentally and to apply the properties of square numbers to solve Math Olympiad problems. Let's begin by looking at this table of square numbers from 1 square all the way to 100 square. What are some patterns that we can observe from this table? First, look at the last digits of these square numbers. Notice that there are only 6 possibilities. 1, 4, 9, 6, 5 or 0. Pushing that idea further, let's look at the last two digits. Let's look at the squares for multiples of 10. All these numbers will end with at least two zeros. Now let's look at the squares for numbers ending with 5. You will note that all these numbers will always end with 25. What is more interesting is that if we take away the last two digits, the rest of the numbers follow a pattern known as rectangular numbers, which is the product of two consecutive numbers. This leads us to the general rule for squaring numbers ending with 5. The trick is to take the preceding number m and multiply that with m plus 1 and tag a 25 behind it. Let's look at a few examples. Say 35 squared. We take 3 and multiply it with 4 to get 12, and we tag a 25 behind it to get 1, 2, 2, 5. For 75 squared, we take 7 and multiply that with 8 to get 56, and tag a 25 behind that to get 5, 6, 2, 5. I won't go into the proof for this pattern, but you can pause the video here to look at the proof in the box given. Now let me take you through some quick rules for squaring two-digit numbers. These rules are premised that you have already memorized the square numbers from 1 squared until 24 squared. Let's first look at square numbers from 51 to 74. If I were to square 54, I would first count how far 54 is away from 50. Since it is 4 above 50, 4 is going to be our key number. The first step is to add 4 to 25 to get 29. Then we'll square 4 to get 16. And we'll put those two numbers together to get 2916. So the square of 54 is 2916. In the second example of 68 squared, 68 is 18 above 50. So 18 is the key. We add 18 to 25 again to get 43 and square 18 to get 324, this is from memory, and put the two numbers together. Since 324 is three digits, we all have to carry the 3 over to the hundreds place so that 43 becomes 46, and we get 4624. I'm not going to go through the proof here, but you can pause the video here to read the proof in the box. For numbers between 26 and 49, let me go through just one example, and you can pause the video to look at the second example as well as the proof on your own. Let's look at 43 squared. This number is 7 below 50. So 7 is the key number, but instead of adding 7 to 25, we subtract 7 to, from 25 to get 18. We square 7 to get 49, and we put the two parts together to get 1849. The method for squaring numbers between 101 to 124 is to double its distance from 100 and to add the square of that distance. So in the example of 106, it is 6 above 100. We add an extra 6 to 106 to get 112. We square 6 to get 36. We put the two numbers together to get 11236. Here's the second example and a proof. For numbers between 76 and 99, we do the same. 
We double its distance from 100, but this time downward. Like in the example of 99 squared, since 99 is 1 below 100, we will subtract an additional 1 from 99 to get 98, and we will square the 1 to get 1. However, since 1 is a single digit number, we need to add a 0 in front of the 1 to make it a two digit number. So 99 squared will be 9801. Here's the second example and the proof. Let's now look at a question on Pythagorean triplets. Pythagorean triplets are integer solutions to Pythagoras' theorem. x squared plus y squared equals to z squared. In this multiple choice question, we have to identify the Pythagorean triplet among the options. Pause the video here and give this question a good attempt. Now, because this is a multiple choice question, the approach here that I'm going to take is to eliminate the impossible answers and trust that whatever remaining answer has to be correct. By examining the last digits, we can eliminate option B and C because the last digit of a square number cannot be 2 or 8. If you look at the last two digits, we can further eliminate option A because the trailing zeros for a square number has to occur in pairs. Hence, we can conclude that the answer has to be D. For question 2, let's look at the famous locker problem. We have a school with 100 lockers numbered from 1 to 100. 100 students run past the lockers in sequential order. Students number 1 opens all the lockers divisible by 1. Student number 2 closes all the lockers divisible by 2. Student number 3 opens lockers that were closed and closes lockers that were open for all lockers divisible by 3. Student number 4 to 100 continues this pattern. How many lockers will remain closed after student 100? Pause the video here and give this question a good attempt. Now while this may be a difficult problem to visualize, we can begin by first solving a simpler problem via brute force. We ask ourselves the question, what if there were only 10 lockers? It is not hard to solve this. We use 0 to indicate close and 1 to indicate open. We construct a table to run a pen and paper brute force simulation of the 10 rounds. Now we notice after the simulation that only locker 1, 4 and 9 remain open. This hints of a pattern that square numbered lockers will stay open while non-square numbers would be closed. We could continue the simulation to test our hypothesis or look for a reason that could explain this pattern. Now let's take a direct reasoning approach. We can notice that the trigger that causes a locker to remain open or closed is whether the student's number is a divisor of the locker number. Hence, by listing the factors of each number, we will be looking for numbers with an even number of factors, as these lockers will remain closed. When we examine the factors of each number, we will notice that non-square numbers from 1 to 100 will always have an even number of factors whereas square numbers have an odd number of factors and those will stay open. Hence, we can conclude as there are 90 non-squared numbers from 1 to 100, these 90 lockers will remain closed. Here are today's extension problems. Solution to episode 3's problems have been updated into the info section of the previous video. We have come to the end of episode 4. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you would like to know more about mathematical problem solving. In the next video, we will be taking a look at the Indus laws. Thank you and have a good day of learning.